Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on Super Mario Galaxy. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I recently played through Super Mario Galaxy with my husband over on his channel, Steven Plays, and I had never played it before. And I think my favorite thing about the game was the orchestration for all of the music, but everything was beautiful. There were so many neat, different power-ups, all of the levels were super cool, and it was really my first time experiencing the game besides seeing stages in Super Smash Bros. And I had wanted to do the Galaxy stages for Smash Bros., but I hadn't played Galaxy until now. And after I played Galaxy, I really wanted to do the Gateway Galaxy that you see in the very beginning of the game. There's this kind of establishing shot of the entire thing that you later go to in the game, and I thought it would be really fun to paint because I especially love painting space things. So I changed a little bit based on how the background is because I really wanted to show off the stars and I wanted them to kind of come in from the angle and show off a lot of the galaxy there in the background and then still have this planet be entirely encompassed inside of this frame. So what I need to do first is I need to paint in a navy sky here to put all of the galaxy stuff on top of. And I've already gessoed my canvas with a black gesso paint, and it was a little rough, so I sanded it down a little bit, so that's why it looks really rough here on camera for you. And I'm going to put the navy on top of this, and any areas where the white canvas is showing through after I sanded it will just get covered up with that navy paint anyway, but the black gesso will help keep everything dark and space-like. So what I want to do is figure out where my horizon line is going to be, paint all of this navy, let it dry, and then start painting the galaxy portion. Time to paint the galaxy, which is the most fun part of doing any of these paintings. So I have some sea sponges here, I have two different textures of them, and I've gotten them damp with no water in them. I've also put on some vinyl gloves because the less paint on my hands the better, and I've redrawn in my horizon and drawn in a little bit of where I want the lightest colors of this galaxy to go. And on my palette here, I have a few different blues mixed up and a few different violets because I want it to have a little bit of violet in this brighter part here. And there's going to be a little bit over on this side too, but not as bright, just to vary up the background there so it's not just this solid blue in that area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my darker colors with this more open textured sea sponge. And I'm going to tap it into the darker blues I have mixed up. Just getting a little bit of paint on it, tapping off any of the extra onto my palette. And then I'll come over here and start to tap it in on the outer side of where I want this galaxy to be. Just blending it out towards this dull blue I have in the background. And then I'll fade into the lighter colors towards the center and some of the violets in that space. I'm also going to do that over on this area to brighten up this. And of course, working onto the edges of my canvas because I like to wrap my image as I'm painting. The next thing to do for the sky is add stars, and I'm using a high flow titanium white, which is very inky. It's almost like pure liquid, there's no body to this paint at all. I have an old toothbrush and I've put a little bit here in a dish. I'm just going to tap the bristles into this paint and then flick it across the canvas, trying to fill in all of the sky with little splatter paints for stars. I'm going to concentrate them in the bright areas of the canvas, but I'm going to be putting them across the entire sky because stars tend to be formed in this area, so there's going to be a lot more in that space. Now, the problem I tend to run into is, did I add too many? Is there enough on the canvas? And I like to do a light covering across the sky, do a little bit more in the concentration for the bright areas, and then the second I start to wonder, have I added too many? I just stop. 
That way I'm not debating and second guessing myself and it's probably good and I can always add more later, but it's really hard to take them away that would involve painting the whole sky back over. You really can't see it now because the tape is in the way, but I added a atmosphere to the painting. Because we have the ground down here and the sky up here, you will get a little bit of atmosphere in between the two like the astronauts would see on the International Space Station. So I started by taking a navy blue and darkening above where the horizon line is going to be. And then I took a lighter blue, which you can kind of see here and when I was testing it over here. And then I brushed that up into that navy blue just to lighten it up on the horizon. Thinking about how the light's going to be coming from this side, so this side's going to be lighter and there will be less of it over here. Once that dried overnight, because I had to make sure it was really stuck to the canvas, I measured back my horizon line, put a piece of tape down above it so that I can paint the ground below it. Now because I have it lighter on this side, the ground is also going to be lighter over here. So I've drawn in a rough estimate of where I want the light colors to go and fade into a deep navy blue in this area over here. I need to make sure that I kind of do that all at once because I want it to have a nice blend transition from the light blue that I'm going to have here into the navy blue that I'm going to have over here. So with it taped off and drawn in where those changes are going to go, I'm going to mix up those colors, start with my lighter area, and blend into that dark area.
I've been blocking a lot of stuff in here for the Gateway Galaxy, but the stars that are sitting on the ground for the big planet have been the most trouble. Now they're all foreshortened, which means that they all like get tilted back and go towards my vanishing point, which is kind of somewhere here on the horizon. But to draw a star that way is tough. I could do it very easily for a box or anything that had straighter sides that weren't all going to different points. So the stars were really tough. And what I did for the very first one was I drew a star in Photoshop and I used perspective warp to tilt it back. So it was like laying on its back instead of standing straight up. And I came up with this star. So it's a little bit more rounded than I wanted, but it's fine. I can just make it pointier once I got it on the canvas. And I picked a spot inside of my vanishing point lines that I had drawn and traced it. And you can see I did make it a little bit pointier in some spots. And then I used this generic shape that I had so I could see how compressed the star was and drew another one. And that one also turned out really well. And then I drew two tiny ones and because they were getting smaller and with all five of their points, harder to draw. Those ones were okay. They're not as compressed as I think they need to be. They're a little bit taller than they should be and I wish they were pushed a little bit further, but those were the really hard ones to draw. And, and in general, I think they all look good together as a grouping, so I left them alone. After I erased all of the chalk, I noticed that a lot of the chalk dust had settled into the grooves of the canvas where the texture of the duck is. So I took a wash color, which was still this dark navy blue I had, mixed in some glazing liquid and went over the top of that just to hide those chalk marks that were still smeared there on the canvas and I could not get up. That's why they look blue right now. Once they're totally dry, they're a little bit tacky yet. I'm going to put orange over them, kind of a glow like I did here with the falling star bits and around the gateway galaxy. And then I'll do bright yellow, bright orange on top where I had the white marker drawn in originally. So that's my plan for those. For the Gateway Galaxy, I started by roughing everything in on top of my circle, and then I blocked everything in with solid colors, which is where I'm at right now. It's solid green, solid brown, solid Titan buff for the Colosseum part on the very bottom there. And I'm happy with all of the locations and the shapes of everything, so I need to start adding value in detail. You can see I've started to draw in the arches down here, and I'm going to work on that first. And because the walls of these two houses are the same color, I'm also going to do those. And then I have to think logically. What makes sense to paint next? It doesn't make sense to paint any of the flowers until I've done the grass. And it doesn't make sense to paint the grass until I've done all of the dirt. And it doesn't make sense to paint that until I've done this darker indent over here. So I need to think about what would make sense to paint because some things sit on top of other things, and the things that are on the very bottom of that need to get painted first. So I'm painting the Colosseum because then I can paint the nice edge here for the dirt that sits on the bottom of the planet. And then after the dirt is done, then I can paint the grass and so on and so forth until I get to the details like the spiky plant here and the green bubbles here and the different flowers that sit in the different groupings across the entire planet. Um, for the star bits falling, all I've done is add a glow to them and drawn in roughly where all of the points are going to go. At some point I'll work on that. That is also drying because it's still a little bit tacky like this is here. So I'm just going to keep working details on little things, filling in small places, and kind of figuring out the best way to finish the planet.
Locking in the parts of the planet took a while because there's so many little ones, but that's one of my favorite things to paint because I can break it into chunks in my mind and I only have to worry about all the white flowers or all the purple flowers or just this house. So it makes it a lot easier for me mentally to kind of fill everything in. Once I was done with blocking in all the planet and adding all the details to it, I moved down here to work on these stars. I had blocked them in with white before and then I had to do a blue wash over them and then I did an orange wash over just the lines of the stars, and then I started to build some value with those, starting with a red, moving into orange, into a yellow orange, and then a light yellow orange, so now they look like they're glowing there on the ground. The very last thing I have to do is sign my name. Normally, I like to put it in the bottom right, but that won't work for this painting, so I'll be putting it in the bottom left. And we're done! We have the Gateway Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster, or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.